Lighting with Paddle TV with yet another paddling tip with the goal of making your experiences on the water as great as possible. And a big part of that has to do with, well, comfort on the water, but also safety on the water. And those both are very much related to the paddling top that you wear. And so how to choose the right paddling top? Well, there's a number of factors that dictate what's the right paddling top. You've got water and air temperature. You've got your paddling skill and expertise or experience. You've got the uh, type of paddling that you're doing. Are you going to be doing calm water paddling? Are you going to be doing rough water paddling? What type of paddling are you doing? And then you've got your predisposition to getting cold. Are you someone that just gets cold all the time? Or are you uh, someone like me that's like a fire and sweats even when I'm doing most cold activities? And lastly, budget. And that's a biggie because these tops behind me, I mean, we're talking, we've got tops that range from a hundred bucks US to almost 600 bucks US for a paddling top. And that's a big range. And so what's your budget? So let's dive right into the first one, which is water and air temperature. And now how that impacts the type or the actual paddling top that you need to get. So water and air temperature. Water and air temperature plays the biggest role in dictating what paddling top you're going to choose. And the reason for that is because, you know, when you're dealing with cold water in particular, if you make the wrong choice, hypothermia, which is uh, your body temperature just dropping, uh, is a real concern, especially if you end up in the water swimming. So the general rule is that you need to dress on the water in a way that you're comfortable when you're paddling, but that you can also comfortably survive if you end up swimming in the water for an extended period of time. The trickiest conditions for that reason is when the air is warm, but the water is cold. Because you know, if you dress too warm, you can just overheat, you'll be very uncomfortable. But if you do end up swimming, you need to be dressed warm enough to, to survive that cold water. And so the colder the water is, the more difficult it can be to dress for the warm air, but you have to, have to, have to dress appropriately to be able to deal with an unexpected swim for an extended period of time. Now the type of paddling you're doing is probably the second most important factor in dictating what kind of top you're going to wear. You know, if you're going to be paddling in rough conditions, I mean, maybe whitewater paddling, maybe uh, paddling in ocean surf, or just big open water where you're getting soaked nonstop, you know, that's gonna make you a lot colder, a lot quicker, unless you have the right top. And even with the right top, you will get colder that way. So the type of paddling plays a huge role in dictating what top you wear. Skill and experience. It does play a role in dictating what paddling top you should get, but it plays a much smaller role than air and water temperature and the type of paddling that you're doing. And the reason for that is you still need to, you know, follow the rule of dressing to be able to handle uh, an extended swim in the water. So a particular type of top is going to be applicable depending on the conditions, but with skill, um, it may change what you need to wear because, you know, let's say you're paddling some challenging water of any type, but you're very skilled and there's very little chance in your mind that you're going to go for a swim. Well, you might be able to get away with a bit uh, less protection, but as compared to a beginner who's going to be swimming a lot in those conditions and getting very cold, they're going to need more protection because they're going to be in the water a lot more for sure. That being said, some of the biggest problems arise when skilled or uh, experienced paddlers, they perceive the, the chances or the risks of swimming to be very, very low. And so they underdress to be more comfortable uh, actively paddling. But when they do end up in the water, they are underdressed and hypothermia becomes a real concern. And so skill and expertise plays a little role, but you still have to follow the rule of dressing for an extended swim. 
Now, the other two factors I talked about, the predisposition of, uh, uh, to getting cold and budget, they're a little more obvious. You know, if you're someone who gets cold easily, well, you're gonna need more protection than someone who doesn't. When it comes to budget, same thing. If you can only afford so much, you can only afford so much. But it's important to know that budget is a limiting factor. If you can't afford a top that has a certain level of protection, it means you can't paddle in certain types of conditions. And really, when it gets uh, to, the cold gets to a certain point, it's just not safe to do that. And so budget has a real impact on what you're able to do. So now let's, let's dive deeper and let's talk about more specific options that you have and the pros and cons of each. But before we do, I gotta say a quick thanks to the sponsor of this video, Outdoor Play. And not only a sponsor of this video, but they are a partner in my mission to help people get outdoors and have the best experience they possibly can. Outdoor Play is a long time online retailer. Um, they started and specialize in paddle sports, although they do much more than that. They're based out of Hood River, Oregon, where I am right now escaping the winter back at home, but they ship anywhere in the world. And within the US, they uh, will ship free for orders over $49, I believe. Um, they have a price match guarantee. They're, they carry great products. They know paddling. More importantly for you, they've given us a, a code, PADDLETV15, that you can use on your next purchase to get 15% off. It doesn't apply to, it doesn't work for every product they carry, but it works for most products. So let's start with paddling tops that let you deal with the cold. And we're gonna start with the coldest conditions, and that's a dry top. All right, so what makes a dry top a dry top? Well, there's really one main thing, and that's gaskets. I'm gonna reach in here and pull out the gaskets. These latex rubber gaskets around the wrists and around the neck. They create a waterproof seal and stop any water from getting inside. Theoretically, you're 100% dry in these things. Now, depending on the type of paddling that you're doing, how wet you get and how forcefully that water is being shoved you know, down your neck, you may get a little, still get a little bit of water in here, but very little. Uh, dry tops, really, next to dry suits, they provide the ultimate protection, but you pay for it. You know, this dry top here, this is NRS's uh, Rev Gore-Tex Pro dry top. This is their Mac Daddy dry top, uh, which is, you know, this isn't the specific one, this is the one I use. Um, it's, you know, the creme de la creme. It's you know, close to 600 US dollars for this dry top. And one of the biggest reasons it's that expensive is because of the Gore-Tex fabric. You know, a couple of the other leading manufacturers also have Gore-Tex models and they're similar price. You pay a lot for Gore-Tex. It's the ultimate durable, breathable, um, waterproof uh, fabric out there. So you can get, uh, though, the dry tops that have the, the gaskets at the neck and the wrist for significantly less if you don't want to get Gore-Tex. It's still waterproof and breathable and they're still gonna be durable. It's just not gonna be as durable. It's just not as breathable. You know, you pay a premium for the ultimate. So, but you can get a dry top for closer to $300, $350 without uh, the Gore-Tex fabric and, and some of the bells and whistles that this has, but still a lot of money. But that is the, the ultimate protection in really cold conditions. And in, in some cases, you don't really have a choice except for a wetsuit. Now, a wetsuit is unlike a dry suit that's designed to keep water from getting in at all. A wetsuit is designed to insulate when it's wet. The joy of wetsuits is that they're a lot less expensive than dry tops or wetsuit tops are a lot less expensive. The downside is that they're designed to insulate when you're wet. And so they're, you ha you're going to be wet and by nature, I think going to be a bit colder unless you get a really thick wetsuit. And then you have other issues. Um, the other issues being mobility. When you have something really thick on, it, it impacts your mobility. And so if you're doing aggressive paddling, whitewater paddling, then wetsuit isn't ideal because you're going to lose performance, personal performance. But for a lot of people, if you 
want to be paddling in cold conditions. You can't afford a dry top. You really don't have a choice. You have to get a thick wetsuit that's going to let you comfortably survive if you're swimming for an extended period of time. Now, the next step down from a dry top is a semi-dry top. And so, I'll just show this one. The difference between a, a dry top and a semi-dry top typically is that instead of having uh, latex gaskets that are really, you know, they can be tight. And for many people, a little uncomfortable uh, on, wrist, on your wrist and neck, in particular the neck, it has neoprene gaskets there to create a waterproof seal. Now, neoprene gaskets, they don't do as good a job at creating a seal. They're, so they're not as waterproof. If you're in dealing with rough water, you're swimming, you're going to get a, some water, a little more water in than you would with a latex gaskets. And that's why they call it a semi-dry top. This one here has the neoprene at the neck, but this is the Orion, NRS Orion, but it does have gaskets at the wrist, uh, underneath, the, underneath the cuffs. So this is a higher end uh, semi-dry top because it has gaskets at the wrist and neoprene at the top. Some of the semi-dry tops will have just neoprene gaskets at the wrist. It really is, it's a matter of, again, budget and preference here. I love having a semi-dry top like this with neoprene at the neck because this is where I'm the most uncomfortable at the neck, having a latex gasket at the neck. If I can avoid having a latex gasket at, at the neck, then I will. The wrists, on the other hand, they don't bother having latex at the wrists. I mean, maybe a little, but it's not a deal breaker. More importantly, when you're paddling or surfing or anything, those latex gaskets at the wrist stop the water from shooting up your arm and down your side. And it's one of the most uncomfortable experiences that you can have is having water run down your arm and side. So I'm a really big fan of this type of semi-dry top. Again, price is the issue. You can get, there are these uh, less expensive versions. This is NRS's Riptide, um, which at the neck, it's a semi-dry top as well, but the neck, it doesn't have the neoprene. It has a neck closure, like a Velcro neck closure. And at the wrist, it just has neoprene gaskets at the wrist. So this is definitely not gonna be nearly as dry as a dry top, but it's still gonna do a pretty darn good job of keeping water out unless you're swimming for long. Now, another type of semi-dry paddling top is a shorty semi-dry paddling top, basically a short sleeve. And this one here, this is the Kokatat, what is it? The Kokatat Napster. Uh, this one has kind of a neoprene, I'm not sure what this material is, but uh, it's neoprene around the neck with a, you know, something to tighten up, a drawstring here to tighten it up. and then. Let's call it, it's not neoprene, but you know, it's, it's something that's designed to be semi-dry around your arms. There's a bit of stretch to it. Same thing here, this is not gonna keep you super dry, but in cooler water, uh, cooler day, you don't want the full long sleeve. This is an extra piece of gear to get rather than primary paddling top to get. But if you do a lot of paddling in different conditions, it is a pretty nice piece of gear. Now, Something that's very similar about all of these tops is they have something called a double tunnel. So I'll show you what that, that is here is you've got this secondary tunnel on the inside. And this is something that's unique to dry tops and semi-dry tops. And the purpose of that is that when you put this thing on, your, the skirt that you wear is going to go in between these two layers. You're then going to cinch the top layer down over top. So any water that comes in to the dry top, let's say water shoots up inside here, it's not gonna soak your under layers that you're wearing. Because you, you know, none of these tops on their own are designed to be, they don't just provide the warmth you need. These are just the shells. You need to wear insulating layers underneath. How much insulation you wear underneath, what kind of tops you wear underneath, really depends on the temperature, temperature of the air temperature of the water. But you don't want that, those layers to get wet. And that's where this comes in. If you didn't have this tunnel underneath that's attached, it's connected up here, then any water that came in through this, the bottom of this jacket is going to soak your under layers. 
Now it's not. It will get over your skirt and it'll go down between your skirt and the second tunnel and into your boat. But not very much is gonna do that. That's a key feature, that double tunnel is a key feature. Obviously, obviously it only really applies if you're wearing a skirt. So if you're not wearing a skirt, you don't need the double tunnel. It's just gonna be there. But it's a key feature for paddling in cold conditions when you're wearing a skirt. Otherwise, the big difference between spending maybe $300 and spending maybe $175 on a semi-dry top are they can come hooded or not. The type of, as I discussed before, the type of gasket it has. Does it have latex gaskets? Does it just neoprene? Does it have even just, does it have neoprene gaskets around the neck or does it have just a, a, uh, a simple um, closure here with a Velcro closure to, to try to create a seal? You can spend a lot more money by upgrading those features. But the next step down in protection is a splash top, a paddling top, and that's what we're gonna look at. So next up, we have paddle tops. Paddling tops, splash tops. These are the most basic of paddling tops. These tops typically have Velcro closures at the neck and at the wrists. They're designed to keep water from gushing in, but if you're swimming and paddling in rough conditions, you're gonna get wet. And that's why also they're the least expensive. Typically splash tops range from around a hundred bucks to at the high end would be $200, but around a hundred, $175 is, is pretty, pretty commonplace. The ones I have here, um, this is NRS's Endurance, a very basic top with uh, both Velcro enclosures, uh, enclosures at the, the neck and wrist. And then this is level sixes. This one is, I've forgotten the name of it, the Borealis. And same thing, it's got, uh, it's got neoprene cuffs with Velcro enclosure and same at the neck. It's gonna provide, it's a little bit more expensive, but you're gonna get a little bit, a little bit better seal, both at the, the wrists and the neck. You know, as always, you just have to weigh your budget with how much protection you need. Now, one paddling top, something to note about all these tops, these paddling tops here, these semi-dry tops and the dry tops themselves, is that they are designed for paddling. And what that means, in kayaking in particular, what that means is they're gonna be fairly short because when you're sitting in a kayak, you, if you have a longer coat, it's just extra material because it's just gonna be, you don't need it. It's gonna be sitting over your legs or sitting over your skirt. And if skirt in particular is gonna be a problem, but that means that none of this stuff can be double as, a, as raincoat or rain gear. It's not stuff you wear around town. And that's where there are products available, splash tops, splash wear, that do have multi-purpose functions. And this is actually my top, uh, the one I traveled, one of the tops I traveled here with. I, I travel everywhere with it. This is NRS's Tico, and it's a paddling top. You know, it's got the Velcro enclosures at the wrist. Um, it doesn't have any kind of enclosure at the neck, but it's hooded. It's basically a raincoat, and it's long like a raincoat, so that it can be a paddling top or a raincoat. A, a casual raincoat coat you're, you wear around town. And that's primarily how I use it as a raincoat. But I also take it on not so much kayaking trips, sometimes kayaking trips, but canoeing trips, any, uh, any kind of even hiking trips. It's an all purpose raincoat that doubles as a paddling top. It's just something worth mentioning because all the other paddling tops, one of the challenges with paddling tops is spending a lot of money on a paddling top that can only be used for paddling. If you can get a top that can be multi-purpose, I mean, that's great, but there's real limitations to this. The fact that it doesn't have any type of neck closure at all means if you're swimming, you're, if water's just gushing in, you are going to be soaked. So this provides very little in the way of protection. If it provides protection from the wind and splashes. But when we go back to that original rule of being able to handle long-term exposure swimming in the water, this obviously is not gonna provide a lot. It's very much of that. It's really gonna be what layers are you wearing underneath this that matters when you're paddling. 
And again, that goes back, really, all of these tops are the same. Even this Mac Daddy dry top, Gore-Tex dry top, if you don't have the right layers underneath it, it's not gonna be warm enough. And what layers are those? Well, for me, well, it depends on how cold it is, but what I really like to wear is a thin layer right against my skin, a thinner layer, something that's designed to wick moisture away because I'm gonna be sweating. I am definitely gonna be sweating because I always sweat. And then on top of that, I might, depending on how cold it is, be wearing a second more of an insulating layer and it could be as thick as a fleece layer if it's really cold out or it might just be a thick, uh, slightly thicker insulating layer from that first layer. The nice thing about wearing multiple layers is you get have the option if you're overheating, you can get one of those off or you can add another one on. So putting all of this together, that's a lot of information I've thrown at you. How do you decide what the right top is for you? Because uh, it can't just be budget because there comes a point where you need more protection then it, uh, the paddling top becomes more than just a, a, a thing of comfort. It becomes a piece of safety gear. And as a very general rule, I would say that when the water temperature gets below 60 degrees, your paddling top really is uh, a piece of safety gear. As you expose yourself to colder and colder conditions, you need to make the step up to more, more protective gear Otherwise, you could be putting yourself in a life-threatening situation. So now let's change gears a bit and move from paddling in cold conditions to paddling tops for hot conditions. And they're not really tech, we're not really talking about as technical uh, gear as we are for hot conditions. There's a couple of pieces of gear that's worth noting. Now, I was just uh, down a most wonderful trip, which you'll see soon if you haven't already, uh, down in Dominica, doing some sea kayaking there, exploring the new Waitakabuli Sea Trail. Unbelievable place. You definitely need to put it on your bucket list. But it was hot. I mean, it was hot. The water is warm down there in the Caribbean, and warm is probably an understatement, almost hot water, and, but the temperatures, it was hot. And so what I used nearly the whole time was this NRS silk weight shirt. It's kind of like a rash guard, but it's not tight fitting rash guard. It's uh, loose fitting, like more like a, a very light t-shirt and it wicks moisture. It really does a great job of keeping the sun off, but keeping you pretty cool as well. And I absolutely loved it. So another piece of gear that I use in Dominica very regularly, another top, was actually what I'm wearing right now. This is the NRS Guide shirt. I actually gave this shirt a Paddle TV award last season because I love paddling in it. And the reason I love paddling in it is it provides great sun protection, as it should. But more importantly is on the side, on the back there, it has stretch panels on the underarm and on the side. and that means when you're paddling, there's no restriction whatsoever. It doesn't feel like you're wearing a shirt. If, if you try to paddle in a normal dress shirt, <laughs> you're gonna feel it. It's horrible, especially when it gets, uh, gets wet, it gets clingy. And so this was my one-two punch, the, the silk weight shirt and the guide shirt in Dominica. This top here, I love this for I wear it under a shorty sometimes when whitewater paddling or I'll just wear it on its own on warm but not hot days. It kind of combines a thermal layer and a wetsuit together. And so it's a, a better way to put it is it's a comfortable wetsuit. So it's designed to be wet and it's designed to insulate when it's wet. It's going to provide a, a close fit to the body because wetsuits need to be hug the body. They need to be tight against the body in order to do their job. If a loose fitting wetsuit doesn't do much in the way of insulation, it has to be against the body. But this is uh, another warm conditions top when, in particular, when it's warm and I'm gonna be dealing with rough water. So I know I'm gonna be getting wet a lot and I want a little bit of insulation. So there you have it. That's a load of paddling tops that we've looked at and talked about. And I wish there was a simple way to tell you what paddling top that you need. Uh, hopefully that sheds some light on, on what's available and when 
it becomes more than a matter of comfort, but it actually becomes a real matter of safety, choosing the right top. And it can, if you can't afford that top or don't want to spend the money on the top, how it can limit the type of paddling that you're able to do and should do. And, and that's just the, the, a reality in, and if you're not willing to spend the money, you can't paddle in colder conditions. Hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned, we got lots more tips, gear reviews, and paddling adventures coming your way. Leave a comment down below if there's anything, well, anything you don't agree with, anything to add to this conversation, any tops you think I should know about. I primarily use NRS uh, tops, that's what I know, but there, I know there's also some great manufacturers doing other great things out there. I can't stay on top of all of it. I would love to hear, hear more. We'll see you again for another paddling video.